All right, hello. Oh, Jesus, what a... Oof. I don't know what the hell has been happening. All right. We are back. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I need to... I'd like to pull up the channel for Beyond the Summit, if I could do that first. Uh, let me try and get that in before I start casting. Yeah, how's everyone doing? We are back. So, the issue was, is that uh, I was asked to cast on Beyond the Summit as well. Um, hence why I took so long, but I am back, guys. Um, welcome, everyone. Sorry it's taken so long. I appreciate everyone uh, waiting around. Guess the last pick? I haven't been paying attention. Uh, I can't, man. I haven't been paying attention. Alright. This is OG? Nah, the title's just wrong. Stro Black. <clears throat> Alright, guys. Sorry about all that issue, but we uh, we should be fixed. Which is, uh, that's good to hear, good to hear. Link, um, there you go. Mushi not there? No. This is live, guys. Alright, we're back, sorry. We had to, uh, just sort everything out, but we are good. So, Tigers were able to take first game off the back of a crazy good dandy tiny. Uh, we're gonna have Bounty Hunter in that off lane. Azur is picking up the Ember Spirit... And it will be a support less. So we've been seeing a lot of less tracks actually put in that off lane uh, secret with the first teams to really start running it. But actually looking at it now, Baraka going to have some good setup with the disruption into the less stun. So that's something to keep your eye out on. <clears throat> but at least we uh, didn't miss the first horn, so I, I appreciate everyone coming back. Uh, Psygnite, Shij, and also one Eno. Thank you for the follow, guys. This isn't OG? No, it's not. It's not indeed. Alright, guys. Oof. Dendy Pog, Dendy Pog indeed, here we go guys. So this is a best of three, anyone wondering, for people joining in on YouTube as well, uh, and they don't know of the tournament, this is the uh, Beyond the Summit Spring Cup, was uh, just announced today. It's going to be a hell of a game, we have another series later on, but uh, I mean we still got still got a few more games to go. So unfortunately we weren't able to really pay too much attention to the draft. Uh, how are they going to lane this, though? They're going to send Dendi down, but... Naga Morning, thank you for the follow, man. I appreciate that. Oh, I still have my alerts open. I think I... I don't know if I can mute them. Oh, well. <clears throat> Moon in China? Yeah, he is. So, they're actually going to send Dendi down to this safe lane. They don't want him... Mid, so... Looks like life still is going to be up. With... Okay, so they're doing this just so they don't get the life still Razor matchup. Because Razor is one of the biggest counters to that life still. Of course, you're able to stay in range for the uh, for that static link. Audio is bad. I haven't got issues, but. It's fine. There you go. <clears throat> Dude, I need some more though. Real bad. All right. Yep. So, like we said, they're gonna put the uh, they're gonna put life still up against the Ember. Let's see if Barak want to try and swap up the lanes and have Razor go down bot. Dendi forced to go for the blink early just to uh, try and escape the harass coming through. Of course, you got that divine favor Zephyr though. We'll uh, try and put some pressure in with that Fable. So they're gonna start with three heroes down bot. And it's still going to be a pretty hard matchup for Velo at this top side. I mean, going up against the Razor. 
They're going to get the disruption to uh, hold in place for that damage to Static Link. Will there be body blocks though, Velo? It's going to take a lot of damage from this. If it's stacking up the damage, it will be fine though. Skull's just able to run himself away, but it's pretty much the same Razor going up against a Lysa. You So, you really don't want those melee matchups. It's just hard to run yourself away. At least he does have the Impale, but you... The only way Velo actually really escapes is if he gets a two-man impale on Spaceman as well to uh, stop the disruption. Audio crystal clear? you love to hear that. What's good, Tickles? Um, oh, I gotta love a pause. Hopefully they uh, fixed all the issues. The description's wrong? I know, I can't fix the title, guys. I don't have access to that. I can uh, I can try and get it fixed. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have access to that. Yes, it's Tigers vs. Barak. So, life still have a, should have a reasonably good time. I mean, it's gonna be able to max out that the uh, feast, and of course, so imagine he's gonna go for a high points in rage just because the magic damage that the Ember has pretty early on. Uh, but they will send the Razor mid now. So even though he's got a reasonable matchup versus the Knicks, they really want to try and shut down this life sealer. That's, uh... I don't know. Barak do have really good setup, though. Just, like, looking at like I said, I haven't really been able to... Uh, didn't watch the draft, but... When you have a... Dis uh, when you have a Shadow Team it paired up with the less track, just leading with the Disruption and getting that Split Earth is a very good way to start these fights. But... We have been seeing uh, Bounty Hunter come back into, you know, starting the off lane. Usually he was been playing as a support, but just trying to get that early level 6 and now with the gold change as well. You can get very far ahead on the dire side, which is scary considering the Razor. He can start snowballing this game. And if you come online before you know the life still it either gets that Midas Radiance. Title is good now, okay. That's good to hear. And once again, they're going to put Velo up mid. So this is much better matchup. Velo won't have to worry about that Shadow Demon. Denty down bot. Hoppy. Got to be careful with that Edict. They're wrapping on the backline. Heifer. Zephyr does have the uh, level 2. So with the Telekinesis, they should be able to chase down the less track. First blood's going to be picked up. DB will take a fair bit of damage for this as well. <laughs> got to love a good haste rune though. Just allows the, uh, allows the Rubik wrap all the way behind. We'll be able to claim that first blood too. And there you go. Once again, they're just going to uh, send that Razor back up to the uh, top lane. They really want to prioritize the Razor being against the uh, Lifesteal. And this is pretty good, though. Like, uh, Velo's uh, getting some, you know, solo experience mid. And hang on a second. Lifesteal is going to join them here. There will be rotations coming through. They're going to need the movement speed. So from the open wounds, but of course, Spaceman, if need be, has that disruption. But just the power of the Chen, which is why we're seeing him so much more now. Being able to just swap the lanes with ease. You just run to a lane and, of course, he's able to teleport a hero. And, of course, Chen, Chen lineups really excel. They they always win, you know, the laning stage. So not the... I don't mean the laning stage. Just the lane swaps. You're always able to uh, get those prioritize in the lanes. But even then, also that Divine Favor is uh, absolute crazy ability. So we'll probably see the side of uh, Tiger start rotating around. Probably like that 10 minute mark when you have the Catapults running through. And then the Chen having the uh, the double Siege. So they'll be able to take this uh, T1 very fast. And hopefully by then, Nyx Assassin will be level 6, of course. He is not playing on that support. It will be the uh, offlane Nyx Velo on it. So he's going to be getting a lot more experience. Early on, it's you know pretty passive here. Like to see, I, I DB can't really solo in this lane, which is the issue. Usually, you really like seeing Bounty Hunter solo, just building up those levels, getting max points in the Janata, and that's when you start really uh, having farm priority there and just being able to excel because you get that early points in the in the track, and then you can start roaming around and helping your team out just with the gold. And it's going to allow these supports to actually get a lot more farmed than the uh, than the Radiant side, just relying on the track. Once again, though, like we spoke about, you're seeing how the Chen's able to move around the map and TP in the life still. <laughs> Potentially, once again, Ifrit is going to keep running around the map, man. As of right now, just everyone's playing a bunch of chicken here. Dendi to this north. Can he get the rune? Doesn't have the blink, however. They're going to be able to close the distance. A good kill for them. That'll be their first one. 1-4-3-7. Just a little bit too late to the party here, but... 
So it's been a slow game already, five minutes in. But we, uh, we saw last game all the aggression coming through at the boundary runes because of the Alchemist. Of course, there isn't one this game, but it could be a similar thing. And Zephyr, he's actually rushing an Atos this game. So, I mean, they don't have the greatest lockdown. Really, it's only the Impale and the Telekinesis. Blink forward, TP is going to get blown up here. Where's the follow-up damage? So he might tick out. And our Hoppy Spaceman's going to rotate him from behind here. But they're really lacking a whole lot of damage here, which is how low level they are. And Dendi with the Blink about to come up. He'll be fine. So they'll get a kill for all their efforts here. Dendi with uh, still only one point in that screen, but just allowing himself to blink forward. And if they can kind of shut down this bounty hunter, stop the levels from coming through. Glad to see you back. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. It's really... I don't know. If it's still going to have a really good time at this top lane... Doesn't matter that he's not against the life, so he will be up against that melee matchup. But of course, Velo is not really going to get pressured here. But hang on a second. They got a haste room coming with the Ember. He's got those remnants up. He's going to get the chains. No mana for the Spike Carapace, so they should be able to chase down Velo. And with the rotations from Ember, that haste room probably won't be able to pressure out this tower. We'll just go straight back to the mid lane. But in the meantime, though, Spaceman just trying to soak as much XP as he can throughout that mid lane. And here we go, however. Thought it would happen a little later, but they got three catapults here. One, four, three, seven. Still does only have one point in that divine favor. So the catapults aren't going to do a whole lot of damage here. Of course, you get eight per uh, per level one. We'll increase every level by eight. And Hoppy is... I mean, he's got the two points of Diabolic Edict already, but... As of right now, they don't have a whole lot of damage. The side of Dio really are trying to focus on their levels here. Apologies. T2 is... <laughs> oh, that's a yikes from me, dog. Velo will get taken down once again. Looks like Azur actually just didn't rotate, but... Uh, with the remnants, only use one. But here come the rotations. Spaceman's going to join them down here. Hoppy leading forward. Remember, they have the really good setup with that disruption and the blink cast range. So the animation, he will be able to get away, however. Just poorly timed from Hoppy. And now Zephyr. They're going to have the... They'd, uh, stun coming through. Just a mini stun. Should be able to get away, though. The Divine Favor HP regen... If need be, Zephyr will be fine. They TP down Ifrit as well. They don't get any kills out of it. So, so much for the uh, perfect setup. Of course, you got to remember, Corp, there is a little bit of a cast animation with that blink. But uh, the uh, Split Earth just off the mark. In the meantime as well, allows Azur to uh, you know make some space that mid lane. Be intriguing what he goes for this game. Pretty good yours just cut out this life stiller. You know, often we see a lot of maelstroms coming through as well, just to help that farming speed and also the magic damage with that slide of fist. And DB very low on levels. He's gonna try and soak some up top. But Velo, it's pretty low, close to hitting six, probably one more camp, and he'll be able to get it. And that's when you really will start seeing Barak, you know, rotating around the map with the bounty hunter, because the track goal coming through. They might be able to find Denny though. He doesn't see the flame guard damage coming through. They get the static link. Will the stun be enough on the chains? A split earth to hold him in place. Dendi's gonna fall here. They don't get the catapult. Sorry, they don't get the catapults. But they will be able to get those kills and Hoppy with three points in the edict. They're gonna be able to push out this lane. And there you go. Velo does hit that six now. Lack it on mana with a dive coming in from the ember. They're gonna be able to cut down the trees. Chen will get found as well. A deep observe ward probably scouted him out. If it's going to be able to make it away. So they'll be fine. Still putting a lot of pressure here. Dendi is in level 6 yet. So doesn't have that sonic wave. Look at the... Wow, that's a lot of aggression from Radiant. Three wards around the mid and bot runes. Really putting eff emphasis on this bot side. And just seeing any rotations down. Looks like they uh, potentially want to try and put pressure on... You know, the tier 1 tower bot. And also this mid lane with how the wards are set up here. But like we said, 10 minutes coming through, they're going to have Velo with that Vendetta, of course, the level 6 and 1, 4, 3, 7. We'll have the Catapults. But in the meantime, though, Brock using this space that they get and the pushing potential with that less track, they're going to go top, DB. Though TP and Dendi should be a free setup for them. Just trying to soak XP for that level 6, but still hasn't been able to get it yet. It was one creep shy. They'll be able to get both Bounty Runes up top as well. So nice movement from them. Dendi does pick up that level 6 as well. Zephyr's pretty close to his own as well. And this Atos build, I mean... It's not one you see quite often, but it's actually 
It's going to be crazy good this team. Just kiting out that Ember and also the Razor as well, stopping him from getting the push with that static link. And that's a lot of the damage. Sorry, I wasn't on net worth. That's Sorry, chat. But there you go. DB does finally have that level 6. They may have gave him the Tome, actually. It's going to be careful. Are there any sentries, though? It doesn't look like the supports have any. But it's go time for them. Impale. I'm just going to push out the Kree wave. I thought DB was on top of it, to be honest, but... And here comes the movements. Brock looks like they're going to try and defend this. And especially with the track, they need to start getting a gold advantage. Nice stun. Stops that TP out. So that we'll hold him in place here. But this tower is taking a beating just because the Divine Favor. Bello has the Vendetta because, of course, that track's on top of him. It doesn't matter. Two points in the spike. Carapace, but here comes Brock on the back line here. They're going to get the disruption. And we'll hold him. 1437. Den is going to get TP'd in as well. He's got the ultimate. He's going to be forced to pop it. He's Spaceman and Infra both get caught here. He's falling low. Can he get away? The one charge is keeping him fine. And he's got the movement speed as well. Dendy falls. They lose three on Tigers. They're going to be able to find 1437 as well. Really good movements coming out from Brock here. Just Razor rotating from the back. And even with Dendi rotating through, just that ultimate wasn't enough damage. Middle tower is under attack. Now, yes, they do get that tier 1 tower, but you got to remember, like we said, DB, as soon as he hits that level 6, I mean, you see the uh, gold advantage coming through. It's up to 2k now for Barak. And it's going to keep climbing now. Because this bounty hunter is going to start joining the fights. And they have actually a lot of damage. Now, Shadow Demon with that level 6. Leshrac has 7 as well. So, all the magic damage coming through. You have very good setup. So, solo kill potential. I imagine these three heroes are just probably just going to run around as a team. Good night. What time are we leaving? It's okay. I'll talk to you. Huh? Night. Yeah, sure. Sleep well. Sorry, chat. Mom came in. Ma'am. <clears throat> Yo, there's some fat stacks here. Good night. <laughs> there's some fat stacks there. I mean, I who takes the ancient one? I guess Ember does with a, in with a maelstrom. That's pretty hard to take. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Mom. Came. <laughs> Oh, you see, uh, we have seen, we saw at that top side, just, uh, Bounty Hunter being able to keep Velo tracked up. So it's very hard for him to make movements with the Vendetta. Be interesting to see if Velo wants to go for a Yule Scepter or even a early Lotus Orb just to purge off the track. It's going to allow him to, uh, have movements across the map a lot easier. Of course, there's not really much else you want to Lotus this game. So if you're just going for the purge, it could be probably best to go for that Yule Scepter. It is also way cheaper. Hey, no joke. It is. <clears throat> They're going to smoke up here. Dandy will be under threat. They need to get the initiation from Spaceman, though. Drop the Observe Ward. Azur to lead forward. Can he get the chains? The luck is on their side. They're going to lead with the Disruption. Hoppy, can it connect this time? Perfectly timed. And here come Tigers, though. The nice two men in pale. 4 5 eight, trying to output as much damage as he can, but it looks like Velo's going to fall here. There's a lot of track kills coming through. Life is just man fighting, but he really doesn't have the damage. If it's going to join the fight as well, it's going to be four dead for Tigers. That's a lot of gold going their way. And looks like tier 1 is going to be the next objective for them too. Take a look at this fight recap. I mean, about a 2k net worth swing. The power of the bounty hunter now just with the Janata being able to get those multiple hits off throughout the team fights and also the tracks. This is, uh, I mean, Tigers were able to come back last game. But it's kind of starting to look similar, even though they did have an Alchemist, they're already leading in that net worth. They just have so much more damage right now. Life's still going for this Midas Radiance build. He really doesn't want to start fighting. And even though there's no, not a whole lot of lockdown on the die side, I mean, they're just constantly catching out Dendi here. If they can just get one lucky chain, Quop is way too squishy. And even with only one point in that blink, I mean, the cooldown is 15 seconds, so it's so hard for Dendi to kite around the dire side. But we will have these bounty runes coming through, so DB... Have the scan, but it's actually not on the bounty hunter. The Maelstrom's picked up as well, so there's a big power spike for this Ember Spirit. We might look to see them actually start getting aggressive with this, but they will get three bounty runes out of it. And Hoppy's... 
kind of playing this like a position three, so to say. Look at his net worth. I mean, it's going to help out that you have the track. Velo will find him out, though. They should have enough damage. One, four, three, seven. It's going to TP in the squad, but it doesn't look like they need anyone else. Hoppy's going to get brought down. And now, meanwhile, in mid lane, though, they're going to trade kills. Looks like Zert will be able to run down Zephyr. At least they get something out of it, but that's a pretty big kill on the left track, considering he was, uh, what, fifth in net worth? And he's uh, almost got that Atos finish as well. That's another way to be able to kite out the Queen of Pain. And also Lifestyle if he doesn't have the Rage available. Yo, chat. I am freezing all of a sudden. <laughs> you see? Oh, Dendy's so poor, man. Like, he really can't farm. Cops doesn't have the best wave clear. Like, you need to use the Scream and then also right-click some more. And they are giving heavy emphasis... Uh, to this lifestyle because he needs that radiance down bot db we're gonna try and close the distance they do scout out spaceman however they're gonna lead him with the track the spike carapace look at the damage coming through though four points of the janata they're gonna be a hold up velo a lot of damage done to the shadow demon but, but dandy with the rotation through they're gonna trade kills it looks like it is another track kill for them lifestyle is gonna join the fight here but they are really lacking a lot of lockdown and in the meantime top lane they will lose the tier 1 tower. They get the dust out of it. DB is going to think about turning here. But I don't think you can kill Dendi. They'll be able to chase him down to the south. In the meantime, though, Rubik will fall. Looks like they're gonna... DB can't get that TP off. Sonic... Oof. Oof. Jeez, that's almost off the mark. But in the meantime, there's a lot of space for the uh, dire side top. They're going to be able to take two towers out of it. And both Razor and Ember Spirit aren't really the best pushes, but lucky you have the less track with four points up in that Diabolic Edict. You push crazy fast. 30 FPS stream? No, it should be 60. That's what my OBS is on. So it should be 60, man. Not 100% certain, though. But <clears throat> if it's got a hood, I, I really like this hood pick up. You recognize that life still really doesn't provide a whole lot of damage right now until he gets a Radiance. And even then, of course, the Radiance is magic damage. So you're just trying to stay alive through the uh, through the magic burst that they have. Of course, they can also fall back on the stack. It is 60 FPS. Okay. Wasn't sure what that guy was talking about. And as, uh, he's going for the Lincolns. Just going to help against pretty much the single lockdown that Tigers have and also the Atos that is still yet to be finished on Zephyr. But this means the Ember is going to be able to play very aggressive across the map here. And it looks like... Do they have a smoke? They are grouping up. There's one on Spaceman who's pretty farmed and that's, like we said early on, solely because the track gold that's coming through. I mean, they have 16 kills already. It's up to an 8k net worth lead. And just this lifestyle has had no relevance in the game because you really want to farm up the uh, Radiance. I'm being told to be quiet, Chad. I apologize if uh, if I'm a little quiet now because parents are going to sleep. I'll shout everyone out at the end that has followed. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, though. Just trying to frankly focus as much as I can. There's a big opportunity. Cassie will be on the summit, so I don't want to. I don't want to fuck up. Oh, can I swear, Kappa? <laughs> oh no, they're gonna smoke. All right. What's what's Dandy got? Finally finished that Yules. We'll be going for the BKB. They do have very good wards in the area. Oh, Zephyr. Maybe the one to pop this, but looks like he's probably just going to end up falling here. Disruption. It will stop the chains from coming through, but Zephyr is still going to end up falling. Doesn't even matter. Probably got that track kill, and they did. So DB chucks it out. Might be able to find Velo. He's got a Midas. Can they scout him? The unstable current does not go through. So they don't know Velo's in the area, but they're just going to push at this tower. Now, they will have that spike carapace. However, they should be fine. In the meantime, though, you're going to see the cop TPing in. 1437's going to get scouted out. Looks like this will be a free kill for them. Chen will fall. He's going to buy back for this life stealer. With that ancient black dragon, he's trying to output some damage here. No, don't think he has the radiant yet. I, I don't see the burn coming through on any of the enemies. Impaled just off the mark. So life stealer just trying to do as much as he can to help defend with the uh, ancient here. But really, it's not a whole lot. Oh, no. Chat, they got the Radiance on the Courier. That's going to be down for another three minutes now. They will find the Bounty Hunter, though. DP, the Impale is there. If it's going to man fight here, Chen gets blown up. Remember, that's a buyback dead time. And here, Dandy with the blink away. He'll be fine. 4, 5, 8. Can he get away? 
They will kite that. Nyx just has to know the Spike Carapace for the stun, but they have the burst. It's a gold like spree for Azul. It's two kills now. This is starting to look very, very rough. Now for the Tiger side, Dendi. I mean, he doesn't have the ultimate. This is a bit ambitious. Ambitious here. Zeph is going to rotate through. They will get that static link out. Now, so the Razor is going to output a whole lot of damage here with the magic one charge. It should be fine. Dendi on the back line. They're going to get the Atos control off that Razor. But he come the die side. Azur is going to join them here. And they'll blow up. Co-op, he just can't get away. And without the Yule Scepter, it was on cooldown. Zeph is going to fall as well. So all that for a Shadow Demon kill. The Bounty Hunter wasn't there, unfortunately, so they weren't able to get the tracks. But still, more gold into the backpack of the die side. Damn, I, I hate being so quiet. I, I hate casting when my parents go to sleep. It's so rough. Yeah, I'm going to... Hang on, guys. I'm going to put a towel onto my door to try and help out with the noise. You gotta do whatever you can to uh, try and reduce the noise. <laughs> a towel? I mean, I don't know, man. You gotta. We're we're living poverty out here. Cause my parents, my parents are next door, so. I gotta, you know, you know the gap like at the bottom of the door. Whoa, who knows? If you block that, I'll buy a little bit. Why pick Chen? Chen's crazy, good man. Uh, Chen is uh, <laughs> Chen's a pretty strong support. I could see why Tigers would pick that. Pillows? Pillows could work. I could do that. <laughs> oh, Mike, I'm not going to say that. It's funny as though. Tell them you're working. This isn't my work, dude. I wish it was. That'd be crazy one day. Put your mattress in front of the door. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Let me do that. By foment? Yeah. Uh, I want to try and put foam in the wall to help out. Should tell them Dota is live. Hopefully, one day. All right, guys. I mean, the, like we spoke about early on, I mean, this bounty hunter was having a very hard lane, um, but Barak really tried to focus on him. They sent him up top to try and get that you know safe experience because there wasn't uh, a whole lot of pressure being put up top, and most of the engagements were down at that bot side and mid, of course, with the lane swaps. And as soon as Bounty Hunter hit that level 6, they were able to start roaming around, getting these track kills, and that's really why Barak are up to an 11k advantage. Yes, they do have 12 more kills, and of course, they only have one more tier 2 to take. But you, it's got to come down to all these track kills, and you see the disparison in the farm as well. This is a position for Leshrac, who is ahead of the offlane Nyx Assassin and also the Shadow Demon. He's already got the Aether Lens, and he's actually going to be going for the gem as well. Will, uh, of course, help out with that Nyx Assassin just moving around. I'm kind of intrigued about the gem because you can, you know, chuck out the track and they'll still be fine there. But, of, of course, gem's going to help you uh, take objectives, being able to deward. I believe the Ember has finished off the uh, the Lincolns now as well. So all of the lockdown coming from the Tigers is going to be completely neglected. And potentially once uh, once Dendi does get, you know, maybe an Orchid or a Hex, it's going to be a long way away. But even then, of course, that Lincolns is going to help out there too. Radiance bottom tower is under How your parents to stop sleeping? <laughs> yeah, dude, let me do that. Oh. Dragon though. Yeah, dude, they'll stop sleeping for me. Alright, so there's the last tier 2. BKB is going to be picked up on Ifrit now. Dendi Sheepstick maybe next season. Dude, he's poor. Look out. Look at his farm, man. He's forced to go for a BKB as well because, I mean, Barak really don't have a lot of lockdown, but even, you know, the few that they have, <laughs> he's just getting absolutely bursted down, and that's the issue of the clock right now, just with how squishy you are, you don't get any armor, and also your gain isn't the greatest. Get them to cast, imagine doing, imagine my mum dual casting with me, that'd be so funny. Yeah, Bounty Hunter was off lane. See, like, even blinking for this DD, you have to be so careful with how you can get blown up. But at least that probably would have allowed Brock to take Roche. Oh, no. Sorry, chat. T2 is. So, the issue with, with Dyer, we haven't seen them do it yet. Even though they've taken all tier 2 towers, they're just unable to really go into Roche. Because I don't believe they have any minus armor. And both Ember and Razor don't hit Roshan well at all. But they are going to think about going high ground now, Velo. 
he really doesn't have, have any way to defend this. And they're just going to be constantly going up against the spam coming through from Spaceman. They do finally have that Radiance, of course. Remember, the Corey did get killed. Valor with a stun. It's only on one, though. If it pops a BKB, Dandy will be able to get that blink away. That's Hand of God down now. Of course, a 10 second BKB. Gonna try and get that Static Link still as much damage as they can. They should be fine. Looks like they're going to try and disengage here. Force a little bit of damage on the tower. Impale just off the mark. They, looks like they're going to re-initiate here. Chains only onto the Ruby Kick. Can they burst him down? And he will end up falling. Does not have buyback. Disruption as well. Where's the Leshra? Can he get in range? Dendi chocks up the Sonic Wave. A good chunk of damage here. But the Atos of Chains as well. He's got that DD. The Yule Scepter is only going to set up for Hoppy here. Where's the damage fall of the Remnants? It's going to be there. No, Dendi survives. And now Razor has fallen pretty low here. He's also going to get down. The Lesh will fall. The Lincolns isn't going to help out if and it looks like Tigers may have taken the team fight they needed here. DB is going to be able to run himself away without the remnants. Can they catch up to the Ember though? Spacemen on the back line. Disruption's going to give him some distance here. Velo will get that spike. Carapace is going to be able to blow up this Shadow Demon. DB's here as well. And Tigers, this is really the fight they've been looking for. They won't be able to catch the Ember. DB looks like he gets himself away. But they don't lose Tier 3 Tower. And that's up to a 2... Uh, Never mind. Whoa, they catch him. Sentry Ward. Okay, four kills for them. Over a 2,000 gold swing. That is... That's that's a start. That is definitely a way to come back into this. And you see just Brock kind of forcing the issue here without being able to take ages. And going up high ground that early, I mean, probably would have needed to wait until they got that BKB on the Razor, but... And if they get this T1 tower, this is a lot of map control as well. I mean, there's not much an Ember can do. Zephyr will pop that Lincolns. They're lacking a little bit of lockdown here, but with the Atos, he's got that slide to create some distance and the Remnant away. He will be fine, but on the back line, who have they found? It's Velo trying to go for the Bounty Rune. He's got that Carapace that's going to stun up the Razor, but Hoppy on the back line will be able to follow up any lockdown need beat. So they're going to fall here. Looks like they'll try and TP themselves away. Trying to hype pop the fight while keeping volume loot. You don't understand how hard it is, man. Because I like being crazy loud. It's really annoying, but... <laughs> we haven't... Ooh, okay. So, before just speaking about Roshan, now there is a medallion picked up on the lifestyle. So, this is going to allow the side of Radiant to potentially sneak Roshan. Uh, Dyer are actually in the area though but this could be a disaster i don't think brock take it anywhere near as fast and it doesn't look like lifesteal is going to pick up that solar crest so just even the little bit of minus armor you get it'll allow them to uh, sneak roshan if need be but 458 is going to be careful it's going to go for the tpr no way to cancel this he will be fine just push out the lane and of course with that rage tpi is one of the best heroes at doing that and brock have actually no magic immunity lockdown as of right now i don't imagine they'll either get a basher or abyssal blade as well bounty hunter might if it starts becoming more of an issue as the game gets loaded later on but i really don't believe that'll happen and there we go like we're speaking about dendy orchid will be the next item of choice for him so after the bkb has been picked up and that is fresh it's a 10 second bkb it's going to help against the magic burst and also that lockdown but they are all positioning around this roshan i mean there's a ward on the high ground Velo's got the four staff now as well, so it's a very good tool to get away from not only the Razor, but the chains as well, holding anyone in by the Ember Spirit. They will make a smoke play. It looks like the side of uh, Dyer, they've done the same thing as well, but they got to be careful because they go near the shrine. It is active. There's a very good ward on the high ground here for Radiant, so the smoke does pop. They're going to scout them out. They both trade Observer Wards here. Both are placed... And even without the Bounty Runes coming through, so they warp scout out Ifrit here. Oh, it's going to get rooted up, but of course, does not matter at all. Smoke's going to pop. Velo. Is there any detection, though? They're going to get the track because they have the gem, the spike carapace. Everyone's just going to try and move out the area here. They'll blow up that Nyx assassin. They've got to try and disengage here. Dendi will be fine. He's got the blink and that infest. And this might give them enough space, though, to go Roshan. They have the double damage rune. Again... I mean, they're doing it pretty fast with the DD. Nyx Assassin does have buyback. Can they defend this, though? I mean, they don't have any vision seeing them go in there. The buyback come through 458. You gotta pop the rage before you go in, sir. DB. 
It's about to fall ages. They do get the static link, though. The stun. Nice rage, though. The Sonic Wave from Dendi is going to pop the BKB. Hoppy. It's going to be careful. The Atos is going to hold him in place. But as er, he does claim that Aegis now. He's going to be able to get out. They still have the double damage room for a little while longer. The sentries drop. So they're controlling up the Nyx Assassin, but no kills so far. Looks like both teams are going to disengage. They'll be fine. But Dire first ones to claim Aegis. Ember will pick this one up. That is big for them, considering they, uh, I really think they have no chance of actually getting that Aegis, but lucky, because this double damage room, man, it's 10 o'clock in Australia. I'm from Melbourne, whoever just said that in Twitch. We have to be up early as well. I've got to be up at like 8, so things you do for Dota. Nyx position 3? Yeah, he is. He's going for the hood as well. I really think Nyx is an Ags, to be honest. Because they need to hide, hold high ground as soon as possible. This is a big issue. BKB, DB, Velo should be fine. Can he get away though? 1, 4, 3, 7's on the back line. They're going to pop the hand of God. Divine favor regen as well. One more right click. It gets a crit, but it won't be enough. The Shuriken, a nice Carapace. And Nyx will survive. It's a nice move for him, but of course that is hand of God down now. It's you know, a pretty big cooldown as well, considering Chen's only level 167 at max. But it looks like they're going to try and split push this game now. Dendi, uh, it's pretty hard to end up getting caught now with the Yule Scepter BKB. So he can play as aggressive as he wants to. Hoppy just trying to force out some abilities here, of course, that Yule Scepter. But he'll be able to blink himself away. Everyone knows New Zealand's the best part of Australia. What do you mean, dude? Australia doesn't exist. Score, it's 1-1. Uh, Tigers won first game. Life Stiller is being played by 458. That is the uh, hero. That is the player. Uh, how long they got ages for? So it's still another three minutes at this top side, though. They're going to get the DOS. DB will be fine, though. They will just run those little legs away. Of course, he's got the phase boots in DB as well. So he's going to start going for this uh, physical damage. Looks like the Yasha was queued up. And are pro probably going to finish uh, with that Sunjin Yasha, I imagine. It just This is where you start transitioning into, you know, the physical damage Bounty Hunter. We saw how much damage he can do, you know, against that Nyx Assassin, but luckily the Chen was behind him. But of course, now with these damage items just starting to come through, DB is going to be a lot of pressure on the map. And Dendi is pretty close to the uh, Orchid as well. And we spoke about this with that Lincolns, but now they're going to have multiple ways to pop it. They can kill this Ember, but it's going to be very hard. If they can get the Lotus... So if they can get the Atos from afar, even... I mean, I guess... Rubik's going for Force Off. That's interesting. So I think Tigers are lacking a lot of initiation here. But I guess they're worried about this Static Link from Ifrit. And also the Chains. Because that's really the sole reason you're buying Force Off here. Dendi went for the AoE Shadow Strike. I guess to try and help clear out the wave. The chains is there. Dendi going to be forced to pop the U.S. Scepter Puppy. Can he get in range for the stun? He doesn't get the BKB off in time. Is there any follow-up lockdown? Dendi, he's going to be fine, but T3 does fall. Life still. He's going to try and TP out now. There's no way to cancel, so he's going to join the fight here. But merely Rax taking a beating with that Siege Wave. They're going to get the Atos to force stuff away. He'll be fine. The disruption is there, though. A two-man chains is just trying to delay this as much as they can. Create some space here. 458. He's already popped the Rage, and there goes Razor. This is the power up against the Life Soul. They burst him down. Rubik falls as well. It's going to be a full lane of racks now, and with all that damage, they're just going to go mid. The buyback comes through, but really, I don't know if Rubik's actually going to be able to help out here. They take towers so fast now with the Diabolic Edict and also that damage, because Razor's going to have it for a little while longer. And Azur, this Ember's just trying to create as much space as he can with the chains. Zephyr will steal it, but how is he actually going to be able to get in range? So it'll be a full two lanes in the meantime as well. They blow up Velo. And actually just going to go for Megas here. I mean, Lifestyle without buyback. And I don't know how they actually hold a Megas. Dendi really can't do anything here. They're going to run it forward. 1437 will be under threat here. Looks like, can they bring him down? However, they're going to get the Remnant away. The Telkinesis is there as well. But Remacha, he's still got ages. Another 40 seconds here. And he's just creating space. He doesn't even care if he gets brought down here. The Glyph to delay. Dendi's going to blink forward. The Sonic Wave is there. Fall pretty low here. Can they get Space Man leave though? The BKB to keep Dendi alive. He's going to be able to get the blink. Zephyr now under threat though. He's overstepped the mark. They're going to pop the Atos. And it looks like with Space Man on top of him, they get the purge. He's going to end up falling here. And He's now Mega Creeps for the Dire side. They're going to back up. It's up to a 24k net worth lead, and they're content with this. Shrines are open. He's from Kentucky, but trying to fake a British axe. 
Twitch chat is so fucking funny. Yo, can I swear? <sighs> Shit. <laughs> Score, it's 1-0, guys. Oh, I don't know how they hold this. I mean... Nyx Assassin doesn't push out ways. Neither does the Rubik or the Chen. This is... This is a little scary. Uh... I guess you're really reliant on the Lysol and that Queen of Pain, but I mean, Dire, if they want, they can still play pretty aggressive here. They know the buybacks weren't up previously, and they wouldn't have had enough time to farm up that gold as well. Instead, DB impales there, just you know, saying hello, trying to get some damage. Dendi's going to join without that Sonic Wave, though, lacking a lot of damage here. Who's got the gem? We haven't seen it in a bit. Is a all right, he's still got the gem. On the back line, Zephyr. Oh, oh, you don't want to be here. There's a sentry drop. They're going to get the telekinesis. Can they blow him up, though? The BKB gets popped, and here comes a remnant of two man chains. Rubik's down. At USF, they're going to be able to get the Nyx Assassin as well. 4 5 8 trying to output as much damage as he can. But really, he doesn't have a whole lot. And now with the Razor on top of him, they're going to get the Static Link. He'll go for the TPR. Can he make it through all the damage? He'll be fine, but it looks like the rest of the team, they won't have the same fate. It's going to be four dead, and that'll be the game as well. So, Barak, they're going to even up the score here. They will take this game two. We're going to be going to a game three, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. So, this is... There you go. Pog Discord. I wasn't recording that game as well. I kind of forgot to, but... Um... All right. <clears throat> So for for anyone that's enjoying the cast, I uh, I'm gonna drop my Twitch link uh, for you guys to uh, follow. It would mean a lot if you guys can. We're uh, we're gonna try and hit 650 followers tonight. I'd uh, very much appreciate that, guys. So there uh, the Twitch link will be in uh, both channels. Oh no, I need a moderator's permission. Oh no. Okay, so I can't uh, post the Twitch link in. Uh... <laughs> that's so shit, actually. Oh, that's fun. There we go. Thank you, Blaze. I appreciate that. So, um, for anyone wondering on Twitch, there's the link. Thank you, Corrupt, as well. I appreciate that. So, if you guys want to go drop a follow, if you're uh, enjoying the casting, it would mean a lot. Thank you all for watching. I do appreciate that. Uh, thank you for Blaze for giving the, me this opportunity. Thank you to uh, Beyond the Summon as well. I do appreciate that. But there you go. Here's the link one more time for because uh, I can give it to people on YouTube. But My mom told me off because you swore. Sorry, man. I didn't mean it. Nothing bad about it. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. All right. Let's talk about this real quick, though. So, Tigers are pretty ambitious, I think, with this Dendi Quap. I mean, even though Barak were lacking a whole lot of lockdown, we saw what the Bounty Hunter can do. And this hero is really starting to uh, become, you know, first, second phase banning material. It's, it's really scary. With how they're able to turn it around, even though the Bounty Hunter... Even though the, the uh, Bounty Hunter was uh, having a really, really rough lane, once he hit that level 6, uh, Brock were able to play around DB. They got a massive gold advantage, and they just ran over Tigers here. And I, we didn't really put emphasis on it, but the Bounty Hunter also sniped that Radiance off the Courier, and that was when Barak started taking a lot of team fights. So, uh, I've, I've, I don't know, massive props to DB, though. Those tracks just giving them massive advantage here and getting that Radiant spot. Tigers, they really weren't able to find anything with the uh, with the Chen. Usually, we've been seeing as of late in the previous tournaments, you know, Chen, at that 10-minute mark, you start picking up these Siege Creeps. And, uh, and that's when you start, you know, pushing all these T1 Towers by at least, you know, the 10-minute mark. You want to try and take at least two T1 Towers and try and get a gold advantage, but... Regardless, we will have uh, game three coming up very shortly, guys. 